Oh, did it work? Did it work? Ha, I think it worked. I think it worked. Howdy everybody. Hope y'all are doing well today. Project that we've got going for this weekend is I've got about 150 feet of woven wire sheep and goat fence that I've got to run on these fence posts that you see behind me going down that way. Uh, we're turning this field here into a goat pasture and we're putting our garden in back over this way. So uh, new fence, keep the goats out of the garden. We don't want that, uh, that's a big problem. So typically this project is not something that's too big and bad for two people to handle. And my buddy Jonathan and I, we've got a really good system for doing uh, fence stretching together. But he's busy this weekend and I can't put this off any longer. So I wanna be doing most of this by myself without any big pieces of equipment, tractor, or even a four-wheeler or anything. We're going to be doing this, I guess, the old-fashioned way, basic, <laughs> maybe more basic way. I don't know if it's old-fashioned or not, but it's the way that I'm going to be doing it. Uh, toward the end of the weekend, and I know I'm going to have to have help on this, we've got to put a couple of gates right back over there, and I'm sure Megan will help me get all that uh, squared away and put in. Boss, do not bump the camera. i got my dog here between my legs, so I don't want him to bump the tripod. So anyway, it's going to be a fun weekend, and I hope to share some tips and tricks with you as I go along. For you know, If you're going to be trying to tackle this project by yourself, hopefully it's not too overwhelming. But if not, hey, at least I hope you enjoy watching. I'm Reagan at the GWP Homestead. Let's get after it. goes. I think handling this fence is the hardest part of doing this by yourself because it's heavy. But you got to do what you got to do. Getting started with this is really hard. A 330 foot roll of woven wire sheep and goat fence weighs almost 200 pounds and it is a lot for one guy to handle. So you've got to use every little trick you can find to maneuver that fence where you need it. Spend the extra money, I mean like a few dollars, on this little wire tying tool. Super, super handy. Way better than trying to do it with pliers or something like that. That little wire tying tool is so handy for twisting this fence around itself. And like I said before, getting started is hard. It just, the fence wants to float there all by itself. So just twist, twist it around itself wherever you can. And that's all you can do to get started. But it sure does help a lot to have that tool. That right there is my handy dandy fence spacer upper. There's already a fence down there at that end, you know, running this way. We're intersecting that perpendicularly. It would have made sense to tie the, the loose end off down there and pull all this this way because I feel like I'd have more room. But the problem is, I bought the brand with the red wire that goes on top and it would have really bothered me if that was flipped upside down, so I get to make things a little harder for myself. This is my homemade fence stretcher, two befores four bolts. The way lumber is right now, you could probably build one of these for about under $100, I'd say. I'm using a bungee cord or a little, you know, bungee strap, whatever, down there at that end, uh, just kind of as an extra set of hands to hold that chain up. We're going to sandwich our fence between our board, uh, hook a strap around it, hook the come along to the strap and the chain, and then just start cranking on this thing so we can get this as tight as possible, pull as much slack out of it as we can, We'll know where we need to clip the end of the fence, and then we can start tying it around and tightening it up. And fingers crossed, whenever we get done with this, we can have this thing taut, and we don't have to worry about having a loose, saggy fence or anything. And we can do it in one try. Like I said, fingers crossed. We'll see what happens. Thank you. 
once I get this come along strapped and get this fence standing upright, if I need to go back and forth between sides of the fence, I'm either going to have to walk all the way down there or hop this fence back here. One or the other, right? That's the challenge of only having one person. You can't have one person on both sides. Not enough coming along or not enough strap. Got to move the, the stretcher bar. Mm. Back in a moment. Well, after a quick lunch break, time to get back and keep cranking on this. At least the fence is up and we just got to pull as much slack out of it as possible so that whenever we tie this end off down here and let, take the, let the come along off, take the tension off of the come along, it doesn't all just fall down. Now, of course, we're going to staple the fence to the wooden post and we got some T-post fasteners to fasten them to the T-post. So it should be okay but we just want to get it as tight as possible so we don't have any trouble. Only want to do this once. BS. The vertical on the fence slipped on me. I pulled it down. Huh. Well, I guess we continue. Check this out. I've pulled two of those down in line with this one. So now, instead of having a four by four square, I've got a 12 by four. I did not expect that to happen. So, I guess we keep at it. With that fence now stretched as tight as we can get it, we're just taking our time doing the best that we can to wrap that fence around itself once more and tying it off so that when we let the tension off the come along, it stays put and doesn't come flying apart and all our hard work is ruined. All right, I'm a little worried that I don't have this tight enough, that I don't have this tight enough and I don't know when I, as I, I'm checking my my end my H brace assemblies here, and I'm pulling them in an awful lot with this come along. So either I'm putting a lot on it, or I did a bad job with my H braces. Just want to find out momentarily. Y'all cross your fingers for me. Oh, did it work? Did it work? Ha! I think it worked! 
fucking worked. Hot dog! Woo! I think it worked. I think it worked. All right. Look at that. Oh my goodness gracious. I'm so relieved. I can't believe that worked. I can't believe that worked. Oh, this is fantastic. Oh, I'm so happy. Okay. Sigh of relief. Okay. All right. I need to celebrate. That's good. All right. Good deal. It makes me so happy. I'm so happy right now. Looks good. Okay. Well, let's get everything disassembled and we'll start putting staples in this thing and uh, T post, T post fasteners. I'm so happy right now. I'm so happy. Yes. I guess I should note I do have to fix some more of those. And I got so lucky. I got so lucky because I thought I was leaving myself plenty of extra, uh, like an extra tag end on that wire, and I did not. So I was just scraping by trying to make this work. So, man, this is awesome. I'm so happy. I am incredibly happy right now. I wanted to go ahead and show you how I took care of the, um, I cut these, you know, tag ends here much too short and that completely by accident, obviously. And I was having a really hard time. You can see some of these, so I get the camera down, they're just barely wrapped around. So what I ended up doing, when you trim, let's see, sorry, tripod's in the way. When you trim these pieces off right here, you know, these little holder, twisty mabobs when you clip those off you're left with all this straight upright that you kind of just have to recycle and so I took that and made a loop with it and just was able to twist that around so now I feel really good about you know this thing it, it should never come apart because this stuff is man, it's so strong but that's a good way to reuse these pieces and be doubly sure that this thing's not, you know, all my hard work's not going to come unraveled. Now it's time. We're going to start, I guess, with fixing the fence to the T-post because it's a lot easier to do this by myself than it is to do uh, stapling the fence to uh, the wooden post. So, just like before, we're using a 4x4. Uh, come on, get away from that T-post. There we go. Using a 4x4 underneath to give us the, the spacing we want off the ground. The reason I'm going with a 4x4 is I'm looking for three and a half to four inches between the bottom of this fence and the ground. And then just, you know, in case we ever wanted to run a tension, like a bar, uh, tension wire, barbed wire along the bottom of the fence, we've got a little space. And then, you know, if I want to get a weed eater or something underneath here, it's fine. So we're going to start with that. And then I would start on the bottom, but I'm going to go ahead and go, uh, let's see, two up from the bottom. Wrap that one around if I can grab it. There we go. Come on. Get around there, boy. There we go. Just give that a few twists. Just to hold it on there and then do the same on this side. If I can do it without busting myself in the face. Perfect. Skip two. We're going to do five clips per post. So one, one, two, go here. Push that guy around. Get a little. Twist on that one, and then 
if I don't like exactly how that turned out there. I'll give it just a little bit more. Now, it ain't going anywhere. These are only six foot T-posts. I should have used seven, but I didn't have any extra sevens laying around, so I used some sixes. So, you know, if I ever wanted to run a tension wire or, you know, barbed wire something across the top, really wouldn't be able to do that. But I used what I got because that's what I had and I didn't want to spend any more money than I had to on this project. So that's just fine. Well, what a relief it is to have that project almost wrapped up. We're here at the end of the day. I'm getting pretty hungry and I don't really care to do much else. So tomorrow we're going to get the staples put in these posts. Going to need Megan, uh, going to have to drag her out here, have her lean against the post while I hit them with a hammer. <laughs> so that'll be fun. And then we're going to do the gates tomorrow as well. So that's going to be the next video. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you can always uh, stay up to date on what we're doing. You can catch that video. And after that, the goats are going to be in here eating all that stuff. That's so exciting. They're going to like it. We're going to like it. Hope y'all like it. Appreciate y'all watching the video. We'll see you soon.